Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. testifies on Capitol Hill about his controversial stance on the COVID vaccine and turning to art to help with recovery. Details on a creative program assisting those with addictions. And yet more showers and storms in the region this evening. I'm breaking down the latest coming up as Mountain News at 5.30 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. It's been another cloudy day here in the mountains, but now some heavy rain is moving across parts of the state. First alert meteorologist Evan Hatter joins us now with the latest. Evan. Well, that's right, Steve. We've seen some hefty thunderstorms moving across parts of the region this evening, but they haven't amounted to any severe weather. We're still under a level two slight risk for severe weather through the evening hours. Any storms could contain damaging straight line winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and heavy rain. Overall, again, a low threat for tornadoes, a low threat for hail, but the moderate or the, excuse me, the elevated threat for gusty winds. But a look at first alert pinpoint Doppler in just a second, you'll notice this overcast that remains in place and has remained in place for much of the day. 75, the current temperature at Buffalo Mountain, by the way. Notice, yes, we've had some downpours move across southern Kentucky. The question is, with all of this moving on through, and there's the heaviest of the rain moving through Middlesbrough now, do we have enough energy to destabilize the atmosphere more for more storms up in parts of central Kentucky to move in and produce severe weather? Well, you see, there's the one storm pushing toward the Lexington Metro. It's starting to fall apart, and we're watching these storms near Indianapolis Metro that are falling apart a little bit. So... I think the possibility for any storm to contain some gusty winds or heavy rain is still there, but it's by no means a guarantee for anyone as we head through tonight. So that forecast first, yes, it'll be stormy at times, but we'll drop those temperatures slowly into the upper 60s overnight. Steve, I'll have the very latest on when we see beautiful conditions for the weekend in a few minutes. All right, looking forward to that. Evan, thank you. A Kentucky man is now charged with murder for a crash that killed a two-year-old boy. Police say Nathan Miller was driving under the influence at the time of the crash in Clark County when Thomas Reed was killed. After Thomas's grandmother learned Miller was in jail, she thought that would bring her peace, but instead it has caused more irritation for Millie Reed. It was three times the legal limit. You had no reason to be on a road drinking or driving. Now that Miller is locked up behind bars, Reed is trying to make sure nothing like this happens to another family. Although she cannot bring her grandson back, she's sharing her story in hopes that it can inspire others to stop drinking and driving. A deadly shooting erupted inside a building in Auckland, New Zealand, which put a dark cloud over the country right before the start of the Women's World Cup. Emergency crews rushed to the area just after 7 a.m. local time after three people died, including the shooter. Several others were also injured. The first day of the games still went on despite the shooting. In a statement, FIFA said is, it is extending its deepest condolences to the families and friends of the victims. In Florida, a 10-month-old baby is dead after being left in a hot car that reached triple-digit temperatures. The woman who was caring for the child has been arrested on charges of aggravated manslaughter. Police say Rhonda Jewell left the baby in the car for about five hours. The outside temperature had reached 98 degrees, but the internal temperature of the car was higher than 133 degrees. Twelve migrants were found huddled in the back of a stolen 18-wheeler in San Antonio, Texas yesterday. The migrants, two women and ten men, came from Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico. They all appeared to be in good health, but were being checked out by EMS as a precaution. Police say they realized the 18-wheeler was stolen after they ran the license plate. After a short chase, the driver pulled over and was found with a gun. The driver, who has not been identified, was detained. A House hearing about online censorship is getting more attention today because controversial Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is among those testifying. Kennedy has been under fire for making a false claim about how COVID-19 was engineered to target certain ethnic groups. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s appearance on Capitol Hill comes just days after his false claim suggesting that COVID-19 was engineered to spare Jewish and Chinese people. 
COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black people. Kennedy quickly defended himself, arguing his remarks were misconstrued. In my entire life, I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. But Democratic lawmakers, including Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, pressed him on the comments. Kennedy, your bizarre, unproven claim echoes that same historic slander of labeling Jews and Chinese people as a race, and that Jews, and in this case Chinese people, somehow managed to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. Kennedy is testifying at the invitation of Republicans who accused the Biden administration of trying to censor him. Democrats say he's getting a chance to amplify controversial views. They intentionally chose to elevate this rhetoric to give these harmful, dangerous views a platform in the halls of the United States Congress. This is a hearing on censorship that began with an effort, with a formal motion from the other side of the aisle to censor Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy still trails President Biden in polls by a wide margin, but he has recently made some gains, mostly among voters who view the president as too old and those who are frustrated over inflation. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. Kennedy's presidential campaign chairman sat in the front row right behind him. The Biden administration is suspending funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology that follows a months-long review that determined the Chinese Research Institute was not compliant with federal safety regulations. The Department of Health and Human Services is also barring the Wuhan Institute from doing business with the federal government mo moving forward. In actuality, the lab has not received funding from the National Institutes of Health since July 2020. Money matters are a top concern for military families, but they might be getting some assistance soon. The House's latest defense bill outlines several proposed measures, including a pay raise, additional employment help for military spouses, and more assistance for housing and child care. The Senate is now considering the legislation. Also last month, President Biden announced executive actions to make it easier for military spouses to find and hold on to jobs. The CDC is weighing in on overdose deaths in the United States. They say most overdose deaths involving cocaine or other psychostimulants that also involve opioids. Deaths involving cocaine and opioids have become more than seven times more frequent during the past decade. Those involving both psychostimulant and opioids became 22 times more common. The CDC says about 110,000 people in the U.S. died from a drug overdose in the past year. A Southern Kentucky treatment center was recently awarded a grant for funding a unique method to help people with addictions. The Kentucky Foundation for Women awarded the Sky Hope Center with an $8,000 grant to use art and farming to help women, some who were recently released from jail. WYMT's Bill Pendleton spoke to one woman who says art is helping her put her life back together. Rhonda Campbell's life was unraveling. Then she found new purpose inside this small home in rural Pulaski County. It's amazing what a paintbrush will do. She spent four months on this picture, but it's just a small part of what she's doing thanks to the Sky Hope Recovery Center. You're just trying to sit still for the moment to uh, move to the next episode to try to stay sober that first 24 hours. She spent time in jail because of her addictions, but she thanks the police officers to the judge and everyone else for the road that led her here. Art and uh, creativity uh, brought that something back into my life that replaced the drugs, that replaced the money, replaced uh, that old lifestyle. And they say this work is simply a metaphor of what their lives are. They're taking broken pieces of various things and they're putting things together. Their lives, they say, used to be a mess and now because of art, it's all coming back together. Wool from sheep on the farm is dyed and can be woven into thread, all of it paid for by an $8,000 grant from the Kentucky Foundation for Women. A person can take nothing and make something beautiful, a trash bag, candy wrappers. Or simply items taken from a creek bank turned into something else. Being able to find myself in art has been a miracle. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Some of the items made in the program may be auctioned off during a fundraiser this fall.
Coming up on Mountain News at 530, looking to make your home more energy efficient? You could be eligible for some tax incentives. How to find out what qualifies and how much money you could save. And continuing to watch the potential for strong to severe storms, but by no means is this a guarantee. The very latest after this.